Did you know that in Resident Evil 4, the game never once mentions anything about Plaga types? There's nothing in the game explaining control Plagas, base Plagas, or how they operate as a social parasite. There are no documents or lines of dialogue covering the basic rules for this BOW, and the ABC variations you hear so much about were just made-up labels created by fans. I know we can clearly observe three different plagas splooging out of these gonads, so I'm going to assume they're correct on this one, but you just never know with this parasite. It wasn't until Resident Evil 5 where we learned exactly everything we'd already known all along and nothing more. Resident Evil 4 featured Las Plagas Type 1 which either had control plagas or base plagas. This information didn't explain the existence of half of the enemy types and their capabilities. Given this lack of information, I've decided to learn as much about the Type 1 parasites as I possibly could. I want to know why El Gigante is a Gigante, and why every control plaga mutates uncontrollably with no rhyme or reason. Like look at this, is this Sadler's dick? What is that? And speaking of dicks, I'd like to know what happened to the Regenerator's Regenitals, if you know what I mean. I get they come from the freezer, but come on. Anyway, I believe that this lack of information for one of Resident Evil's most versatile and dangerous B.O.W.s was intentional. I think it was just lazy writing so that the devs could get away with anything they wanted in their game, no questions asked. Sort of like Disney pulling new force powers out of their ass every installment, or the magic nanomachines from Metal Gear. You want to fight an ogre from Lord of the Rings? Okay, there's a plaga for that. You want a man-sized bug that can turn invisible? Oh, how convenient. Somehow, Las Plagas can do that. You ever wonder what you'd get if alien predator and they had a baby? Don't worry about the logistics, just know there's a plaga for that. See what I mean? The possibilities are endless with no rules, especially for presenting wild conspiracy theories that challenge everything you think you know about the official Kennedy Report. A theory I've dubbed the Las Plaga Theory. And it all started with one simple question. What exactly was the purpose of the sample? I know you've been playing this game for close to 18 years now. Of course we all know what the sample is. It's the sample. It's super important. But does anyone actually know what it does? or how Sadler intends on using it? Honestly, I'm kind of embarrassed that I didn't have an answer for this. All these years, I had just assumed it was another Control Plaga sample. But, after conducting all my research into Las Plagas, reading every document in Resident Evil 4, 5, and even that journal from the villager in Resident Evil Incubate, I realized a huge piece of the puzzle has been missing all these years. According to Resident Evil 5, the sample is just that, a Las Plagas sample. But how can we accept this answer from the Kennedy report if he never even got his hands on the sample? The only information he ever gathered about the sample was that it was called The Sample and that it was super important to Sadler's plans of world domination. But what exactly was Sadler's plan? We know the sample has to be used with Ashley somehow, even though she's already infected, because why else would Sadler stop her escape if his plan all along was to send her home infected? And yeah, I know he wants that ransom money, but like, if his plan works and he gains control of Washington, he could just siphon money legally from the US, like all the other cult leaders. And I know we can already tell just by looking at Ashley that she's a basic bitch, but seeing how Sadler has free use of her whenever he wants, we know she's infected with the basic plaga. So it doesn't make much sense for this sample to be a control plaga. What is Sadler gonna do? Infect the president with a plaga that gives him superpowers and allows him to retain his free will? I don't think so. Whatever it is was apparently so dangerous that Luis Serra was willing to sacrifice his life just to keep it out of the hands of the Los Illuminados and Ada's organization. And luckily for the world, Ada only gave Wesker a base sample. Getting my hands on the sample was my initial objective after all. But I've sent Wesker a different present, just as the organization ordered. And I doubt this sample is just another Queen Plaga egg, seeing how it was super important long before the Queen's death. I guess I could see it being super important if, like, the Queen was going through menopause, but if that were the case, I don't think Sadler would be passing out eggs like he's the damn Easter Bunny. He even said he had another egg for Luis after his meds wear off. So it's not a control plaga, it's definitely not a base plaga, it's not a new queen egg, 
and it's not something Sadler can just poop out again, seeing as it was engineered or altered by Luis Serra. And we know it has to be used alongside Ashley, or at least before she goes home. So with all these possibilities exhausted, I turned my attention to Ada's campaign separate ways, where I discovered a new name for the sample, the Master Plaga Sample. I ordered him to bring me a Master Plaga specimen, a sample for evidence. And she's the only person that ever calls it this, but I'm going to take her word on it, seeing as she's been in communication with the lead researcher and even got her hands on a tissue sample, where her organization gave us the only real scientific reasoning behind some of the functions of the control plaga. For this sample to be labeled the master plaga sample implies the existence of a master plaga parasite. So where is it? Or better yet, who has it? Who's hosting it? What power does it actually have? Is this the one plaga to rule them all, with power to control other control plagas and base plagas, all without the use of ceremonial staffs? Or maybe this power could influence hosts from overseas, like, say, someone infected in Washington? And that's why Sadler needs to use it with Ashley, so he can pair up with her like a Bluetooth device. This would explain the lack of information on the sample, and why his plans would fall apart if the sample ever got in the wrong hands. Okay, I have only one very important question. Where did it come from? Was it engineered by Luis? Or was it stolen from the real Master Plaga host? And if there is a real Master Plaga host out there, then it must not be Sadler, seeing as he's so desperate for the sample. So now the question is, who could be the real leader? Who's really in charge here? What if Sadler is just a decoy, a puppet to the Master Plaga's will, a figurehead put in power, to protect the identity of the real cult leader. And what if Sadler was tired of playing that part and made moves to become the real leader? Honestly, all the evidence is there. Like I reported in my last video, Who Killed Lady Plaga, there definitely was rising tensions between the three Los Illuminados factions. I believe it is possible that Sadler was attempting a coup here. We can see from documents that Mendez and Sadler weren't exactly seeing things eye to eye on how the operation was being carried out. Mendez questions Sadler's leadership and even goes on to ignore orders and withhold information from him as if he can't be trusted anymore. And just like, look at Sadler. He's literally the cliche Hollywood villain, like he's playing a part, wearing a costume, putting on a show like that fake ass Mandarin from Iron Man 3. And if you're not familiar with that reference, the Mandarin is an actor locked up on a prison island in a mock throne room where he makes terrorist threats to world leaders dressed up in religious regalia. And when the cameras aren't rolling, he's shooting up drugs and ordering more prostitutes. Krauser, go get the girl. Where's the Mandarin? Oh, Where is it? Whoa, 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 he's here. He's here, but he's not here. He's here, but he's not here. He's, what do you mean? Uh, it's complicated. Hey, it's complicated. It right? is? It's complicated. What are you, decoy? You're a double, right? Don't hurt the face. I'm an actor. And there's no denying that Sadler's throne room is a prison cell. On one end, he's locked in by hallway lasers, and on the other end, he's trapped in by a bottomless pit. The only way out is this gondola stationed on the opposite end that you can't call over. And yeah, I know he's head of the church and makes regular appearances in the village, but this is Las Plagas we're talking about. Who's to say he isn't being forced against his will to keep running the church? But that just brings us back to our previous question. Who's actually running the show here? According to Resident Evil 4's Incubate, a journal which is totally canon but was only released in Japan, says that Chief Mendez was once the real cult leader. And back then, he went by Lord Mendez. And it was Lord Mendez who convinced Salazar to reopen the Plaga Mines. And it was Lord Mendez who introduced Osman Sadler to the church, appointing him as the new cult leader. And, I gotta say, it was some real convenient timing when Mendez stepped down. He was able to place all of the blame of Operation Warp Speed on Sadler, even though it was his fault all the children had died in the village. So, let's say Mendez is the real head Plaga in charge, a real master Plaga that has control over all the other Plagas. If this were the case, I'd imagine someone like Sadler would be trying to break free from their control which would finally explain the existence of Sadler's Plaga removal machine housed so close to his cell, but kept separate from the other labs. Seriously, 
This device was hidden far from the labs, next to the exit near the construction site. Maybe this tool helped Sadler sever Mendez's control over him, and Mendez never even noticed. Kinda like Zoe and Lucas, how they were free from Evelyn, but still played their parts to remain undetected. This would also explain why Mendez keeps Ashley locked up in the village, away from his decoy, and why Sadler avoids contact with Salazar and Mendez. Not once in this game do these guys ever share the same screen together. And, just by looking at each one's environment, you can easily tell there's trouble in paradise. On Sadler's Island, the locks are on the outside, while on the inside, there are entire hallways cemented shut and the exits are blocked off. While over at Salazar's castle, he's racked up entire bodies from all over the community. Plus, this place is on high alert, geared up for war, just like that prison island militia. And just check out both ends of the castle. On the front, there's a drawbridge that leads to a gate that only Mendez can operate. On the back side, there's an elevator from a dock that leads to nothing. I want to talk about this. Imagine you're like Sadler and you're like, oh, I want to go visit Salad Bar. And you hop onto this elevator because this is the rear entry to the castle. And then what do you think of this? So you're like, what the fuck? Am I not welcome here anymore? There's no door. I have to climb my ass up that? Both these entries are basically demilitarized zones, but I think the most telling clue is the upside down symbol of their faith, which can be found inside the church as Ada. This has to be a bad omen for the Los Illuminados. Like, imagine walking into a church and seeing an upside down crucifix. If this were a flag, it would mean dire distress. But the main reason I support this theory so heavily is because if this theory were correct, it would explain away almost every plot hole and baffling decision made by the cult's leadership, as well as the existence of U3. Like, maybe Sadler needed that master sample, but he couldn't get it from Mendez willingly. So, with help from Luis, they tried cloning Mendez. I know it's a stretch, but just like look at them, they're literally the same facial model, side by side, down to the ear curls, even the name U3 means Ultimate 3, which suggests it was created from the Ultimate Parasite, a Master Plaga. There's also the fact that the creature defies one of the few hard set rules about the parasites, and that is, if the host dies, the parasite dies, and Leon clearly kills the host, like the entire nervous system is down, but the creature keeps coming. Anyway, like I said, this theory could fill in all the holes. It definitely explains away the baffling choices made by Sadler and Mendez. Like, why Sadler infected Leon, only to then have him executed along with Luis five minutes later. Luis, who he needed alive so he could retrieve the master sample. And we all know Mendez opposed keeping these two alive, locked up together. So I believe it was Mendez who hired this guy to kill Luis seeing as he didn't need the master sample to begin with, and to him, the terrorist plot was going along as planned. And I also believe that Sadler infected Leon to keep tabs on Luis, who we all know couldn't be reinfected so soon, seeing as the anti-parasitic meds were still in his system. Plus, another discovery I made was that Mendez lied about where he was storing the captives. In his orders, it states that the prisoner will be transferred to a secure location in the valley, but Luis and Leon are taken to a ravine. This happened right after Mendez began to question Sadler's actions. Was this done to throw off spies? And speaking of spies, I've found proof that this executioner was hired by Mendez to kill Luis and Leon. Because every time Mendez knocks someone out, this guy shows up wielding an axe, an axe not found anywhere else in the game. And strangely, Ada wakes up to villagers chanting like the castle monks, something we've never witnessed villagers doing anywhere else in this game. And Mendez never reports her capture to Sadler. Did he assume she was working for him? And another suspicious thing I noticed as Ada was the lone gonad that stole Leon's jacket. Was he an agent of chaos working for Sadler? He was heading in the direction of Mendez's house. Mendez, who was already full of bullet holes long before Leon and Ada ever shot him. 
Did Sadler set this up to assassinate Mendez and put the blame on Leon? It's nothing to get all upset about. Don't tell me you've never swatted a bothersome fly. Oh, and one last thing I noticed that diminishes Sadler's rank and abilities. In Ada's report, she claims to have seen multiple cult members using ceremonial staffs just like Sadler's to control basic gonads. I've seen cult members carrying ceremonial rods, and I wonder if they emit these sounds. Of course, this is purely theoretical. So are there other generals on his level? Whatever, I'm sure you guys are tired of all these what ifs, so I'm gonna hit you with the hard evidence now. No more bullshitting. I'm gonna prove to you once and for all that Sadler was a decoy, and that Batoras Mendez was the master of the Los Illuminados. The big cheese. So here it is, irrefutable proof that Mendez was the cult leader. You can look this up yourself. Just go to Google and search the meaning of the nickname Big Cheese. So here it is, this is what it means, and this is the result. The Big Cheese is the person who holds the most power in any situation. If you overhear someone at work describe you as the Big Cheese, it means that he thinks of you as the most important person in the office. You might also call someone important the head honcho or the top dog. Wow. Now, I know this is kind of a lot to take in at first, so let me break it down for you guys. Notice how it says, someone at work. And notice the part where it says, he thinks of you as the most important person. We'll apply all this in relation to Luis and his perspective on Mendez. Luis works for them, he's a man, and he may also say things like head honcho, seeing how he's Mexican and all. Google spells it out for us perfectly. Now, just compare this to Sadler's first name, Osman, which according to babynames.com means God's protection. I don't know about you, but it sure sounds like a decoy name if you ask me, especially if that decoy was protecting someone who used to go by Lord Mendez. Mendez, whose real name actually means offers sacrifices to God. Seriously, I'm not making this up. I think Capcom actually did their homework when it came to picking these baby names. I mean, all we ever see Mendez do is make sacrifices to God. Well, at least attempt to, with Ada, Leon, Luis, and now Sadler. But the real proof that these names were no accident can be found with Salazar's name meaning, which literally means Old Castellan Hall, which is exactly where we only ever encounter him. Me llamo Ramon Salazar, the eighth castellan of this magnificent architecture. So this clearly was no mistake. With this Kubrick level of thought put into every detail, I started looking for subliminal clues. Like, what was Stingy Mikami trying to tell us when he had Mendez shoot Sadler's portrait right between the eyes? I also noticed that this game is obsessed with the number three. The three leaders, three branches of government talk, the three real-life parasite examples, the three color puzzle, the three puzzle pieces, the three locations, the three boards jamming the gears, ultimate three, the three base parasites, but it claims to only feature two plagas, control plaga and base plaga? I don't think so. And then there's the castle gate, which implies that Mendez's vision is the only way forward. Not Sadler's vision, not Salazar's vision, but Mendez's vision. Sadler would need Mendez's approval to pass through here. And, speaking of Sadler's vision, I want to point out the obvious but overlooked differences between Mendez's final form and everyone else's. I noticed that the control plagas seem to enhance the host's weaknesses, strengthening their disabilities, all except for Mendez. With Krauser, the plaga replaces that bum arm of his that he injured back in Mexico with Leon, not to be confused with this game's version of Mexico, set in Europe. Big shout out to all my followers for clearing that up for me. Anyway, Krauser gains a super arm, Salazar gains a massive schlong, a giant one-eyed monster to make up for his little dick energy, and as for Sadler, he gains four legs, giving him the stability and mobility he needs so he doesn't have to walk around with that cane anymore. But then, there's Mendez, who clearly should have turned into Eyeball Man or something like that, but no. Even though he's missing an eye, he turns into the very symbol they all worship, the symbol of their faith. He also loses his legs to complete the look. Just look at them side by side, and this is all the proof you need. So I rest my case. You can't even deny this theory at this point. 
He is and was the secret leader of the Los Illuminados. It's just unfortunate he was taken too soon, and I believe that Sadler had a hand in that, seeing how every document in the village was conveniently placed to guide Leon to Mendez, and if you're still not convinced, then I'll leave you with this one last question. If Mendez wasn't the leader, then why was he the only one to have a bathroom in the entire game? Huh? Anyway, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this theory. I have a couple more RE4 videos coming, so make sure to hit that subscribe button to get notified when they drop. And thank you to all my patrons. Thank you, Kyle, Marco, Julia, E13, Brian, Mark, Experiments, Trevor, Turtle Talk, and Kiara for supporting the channel. If anyone else out there would like to show their support, please check the links in the description below. You'll find my Patreon and Dead by Donovan merch store. Also, please just like and subscribe if you enjoy Resident Evil content. Thanks. Bye.